What's up, LTD addicts? Let's talk about Better Docs. This is a tool that'll help you add a knowledge base to any website. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, I'm Dave Swift from ThatLTD.life, where I review software tools with lifetime offers. Today we're talking about Better Docs. Let's get into it over on AppSumo. You can see here that it starts off at 49 bucks. Let's go down to the plans and codes section. So very generous offerings here. You can stack a single, double, or triple, and each code is 49 bucks. You're gonna get 10 sites, 25 sites, and unlimited sites respectively. So it'll cost you three codes to get up to unlimited sites here. Great for developers. Now, before I actually just go right into the software, I figured, you know what? I'm gonna show you a Better Docs installation and what, what better place to do that than the Better Docs website themselves because of course they use their own software. Now, I will give you a little bit of background here. This application or this plugin was developed by the same team behind uh, things like Essential Add-ons for Elementor, which I've reviewed on this channel. Also the WP Schedule Post review that I did about a week and a half ago, that was from the same team as well. And they've also done Notification X, which was a lifetime deal, but not over on AppSumo. So, really, really high quality plugins. So I'm expecting a lot from them. Uh, this is what their website looks like in terms of their documentation. Now, uh, it looks beautiful and I love how it looks. I'll just say it right off the bat. I think this is a great looking knowledge base. I think knowledge bases are uh, a really, really important part of a lot of businesses. I know I spend a lot of time on knowledge bases because I'm always learning software. So uh, having a really good one is important to me and I can see how it really would cut down on the customer service. Now, I've said all that, that nice stuff about the developer. However, I will say that their, their knowledge base is not quite developed yet. I've had a lot of issues learning this software, but now that I've got it, I really like it. And I'm gonna hopefully give you a little bit of a user's manual here so you don't have to spend time figuring out the same things that I did. It's actually very simple to use. There's just kind of some onboarding issues uh, that I feel are important. So I didn't find answers here in the help docs, although it is a very nice looking help doc. Let me give you a little tour here and then we'll actually get into the software. So of course we got the search bar. That is part of the software, uh, something you can customize the look and style of. Then we've got the categories of posts right here. And so I'll show you how to set those up. And then of course there are actual posts inside of each category. Uh, there's this little widget in the corner that is also part of Better Docs. In fact, it's one of the more interesting part of Better Docs because you can actually embed this widget on any website. It doesn't have to be a WordPress website. They give you a little uh, iframe script. I believe it's an iframe script that you can stick anywhere that you could put any other script. So let's say you have a Thrivecart checkout page and you want to put some help docs on there to answer people's questions before they check out you'd be able to do that. So I think that's really cool. Uh, so this is obviously gonna pull in from the documentation that you have uh, created inside of Better Docs. And if it doesn't answer their questions, there is an option up here to submit an email. So this could go to you know your regular email address or if you're linked up to like a fresh desk or something like that, it could go right over there. I know, so the utility of this, a lot of help desks will come with a knowledge base, but you'll only get one. So if you wanted to have a dedicated knowledge base, say for each product that you have, uh, there might be an additional fee from something like Live Agent. I know that they do charge, I think it was $20 extra per month for an additional knowledge base. So this would be a way that you could uh, amplify the amount of knowledge bases that you have or just create them for customers that don't necessarily want to have an entire help desk. A regular old email is probably fine for a lot of local businesses, but they might be able to benefit for having a knowledge base. So there's some use cases there. Now let's actually look at an article because they do a really nice job uh, with the articles in terms of helping you find the information that you want and then also getting you interested in reading more articles. So as I'm scrolling through here, you'll be able to see this little table of contents that's on the left turns into a little sticky. And each heading tag inside of the post, so if I label this like an H2, that'll show up over here as something that I can click and go right to. So obviously this document only has the one heading because it's a pretty short document, but I can also see other related uh, posts over here inside of the getting started category, or I can open up any of the other categories inside of the, the knowledge base altogether. So uh, really, really nice user interface. Uh, th that impressed me quite a bit and I was really excited to try out the plugin, but then I had those hiccups getting started. So. I am gonna help you learn how to use Better Docs because there really is no onboarding. That'd be the one 
downside, I would say, about this. Uh, you're, you just install the plugin and then you're left to figure things out for yourself. So the number one thing you wanna do when you install BetterDocs is go over into the categories section and set up your categories over here. Now, there is two different UIs. They, they have the exact same functionality. This is their newer UI and it's definitely a lot uh, prettier. Uh, actually, I take that back. They don't have the, the same functionality because this gives you the ability to move your help docs from category to category just by dragging and dropping. So really, really cool uh, feature there. And if you wanted to add a new post to, let's say the FAQ category, I can hit the plus button here and then it'll open up the WordPress editor so that I can add the additional post. Now, my point is that if you didn't set up these categories first, when you go to the all articles and you say add some articles, it just shows up as blank. If you're in the, the new UI and you're looking at all articles, you will see nothing on this screen, even if you add a new article. And that was really confusing to me because I added three articles and I sat there and I stared at the screen wondering, how do I access them again? So uh, step one, create your categories first, then populate them with your articles. Step two is you wanna have one of those very nice looking docs pages. And in order to do that, I kept thinking, well, Shouldn't that just kind of be created for me? Because when I've used other applications like Amelia or Tutor LMS, uh, both products that I've reviewed on this channel, they would actually build out those pages for me. And it actually indicates that they did do that. However, they don't. It's very simple to set up. But if you look right here, it says enable built-in document page. Well, and there's a little checkbox by default that is on. So I thought, you know, there'd be a document page. However, there's not. A very simple fix to that is just to create a page that has the slug docs. That's all you have to do. They don't create the page for you, but once you do, you'll get that same looking page. And I'll go ahead and just preview it here for you. Uh, now, mine is not styled. Oh, mine isn't showing up because I have a wrong permalink set up. That is another thing that's very important to make sure you have your permalinks set to be the post name, which I do, uh, but I think I had it set up wrong when I created the page initially. So let me go ahead and change that. All right, I went ahead and published everything. Let's look at it now. You know, it's still showing up with that page ID, uh, but that might just be cached. I mean, just load the docs page. There we go. That's what it looks like by default with, you know, no additional styling. You can see that my background doesn't really make the search bar stand out. That's very easy to customize. In fact, we can just open up the customizer right here. It's gonna pop open and we can do some live editing right inside of the customizer because there's now a better docs section right here where I could go to the docs page and I could actually change the layout. Maybe I wanna have uh, this type of layout like we saw on their page or we have maybe some cards like that, that looks good. And then we can also have a background color with some other cards. It's again, very hard to tell, but there is a background, uh, a line right there. All right, so I went ahead and I just made uh, some changes in my theme. I'm using the Astra free theme. I just made the background color darker so we can see where the actual content is here. Uh, so I'm back over inside of the Better Docs Docs page customizations. Uh, right, I've already went ahead and changed the background color right here. You can see I can uh, drag this around and make that look however I choose. Definitely want to take your time with this and you know have a designer probably give you a little bit of help. There's a lot of color options. Change the content area width. We can change the spacing between columns uh, so that, that it gets a little bit wider. The category icon size, you can see that getting bigger there. We can change the font size. So, you know, like you'd expect, you can really customize this to be exactly what you want to see on your homepage. All right, so jumping back out of this, I'm gonna go into the other sections here. We've got a single doc page where I can customize the look of the single doc. And I'll actually go into a document here and we can play with that a little bit. But before we do, I wanna show the live search options. So we can change the size of the search box right here. Uh, of course, we can change the background color of the search box, make it stand out a little bit. All right, that's starting to look like a, a homepage. I would definitely wanna match that color exactly. We can change the search icon color right here. You can see the magnifying glass. I can change the look of that. Maybe I wanna make it, oh, I don't know, how about red? Make it stand out a little bit. There we go. So really a lot of customization uh, available here on the main docs page, whether you're changing the search settings or you're changing just the, uh, the look of the different categories. So what I'm gonna do next is actually go into a single document and we can look at some of the style options there. Then we'll head over to the back end and look at the options for uh, layout in terms of what is actually being displayed. And then finally, we'll get some a roundup of this little widget over in the corner and then it's time for my final thoughts. So what I'm gonna do next is open up that individual document. So here I have an FAQ doc. I'm just gonna go ahead and open that up. And I did put some styling in here. So as I scroll down, again, you can see 
I've got some different headings and I've used an H2 as well as an H3 and you can see that it's uh, got a little indent there. So that's really cool. I can see my other documents that are available, but you know what? What if I don't like how this looks? What if I don't want blue colors or their icons here? Uh, how easy is that to change? Well, we can open up the customizer and uh, get into things a little bit here. So this is going to be that single doc page. So I'll go into better docs and over to single doc. So right now I have this template, but I could choose that one right here. That one has a little bit less styling. And you know what? I personally kind of like that, how as I scroll down, that part just stays. So that's pretty cool. You know, it's it's gonna be a case by case basis, depending on what style you like and the format and, and look of your existing website. Um, all right, so you can see I've got this table of contents showing up over here, uh, which is actually the table of contents for this page. And then this is staying sticky. So I didn't notice that before. And I think that's actually kind of cool, but um, I'd probably want to disable one or the other. I don't know that I would want to have both up at the same time on that particular preset. All right, so I'm just going to go back to the original one because that probably is the best looking one. We'll see some of the options. We can change the colors here. I'll make this uh, maybe a purple color. And that is for the font size right here. That's what changed. And then I can also, whoops, let me go to the, the separator color. That's gonna be that right there, I believe. Let's make it something obvious, like a green color so we can see where it is. Oh, you know what, here it is. It's uh, right between uh, the breadcrumbs, I believe. So let's, let's double check that. Yep, there we go. It's the uh, area between the breadcrumbs. And then of course we have the active item, which is gonna be this right here. And I'll make that, uh, why don't we do that purple? And yep, there we go. So you really have a lot of choice in terms of making things uh, be on brand and fit with your specific color set. Here is the sticky table of contents width where I can uh, maybe make this be a little bit smaller. That would be the table of contents. Now I don't, maybe it has to reload. Yeah, I think that was it. Let's make it even smaller here and I'll reload it. Uh, I don't know if it's changing a whole heck of a lot, but uh, that's what it is. We can change the, the color of the background here. Um, you know, really, if you see an item, there's going to be a nice little slider in the customizer to make it look good. Uh, pretty impressive uh, feature set here. So I really, uh, you know, I like when, of course, you can do this with CSS, but I like when the developer takes the time to just make it easy for all of us. I'm sure for people who are CSS masters, this is very simple, but for us humans, our mortals, uh, it's a little bit more difficult to find the element and style it exactly like we want. So I like that. There are options to have uh, sharing at the bottom of your post here. Here are the sharing options. We can turn on and off certain features. So if you're just doing Facebook and Twitter, it's very easy to disable LinkedIn and Pinterest, for example. Uh, then we have uh, the, all the footer options in terms of font size, navigation, arrow size. I mean, really just uh, every little nuance is available for customization. All right, let's go back into the dashboard here and I'm gonna go ahead and open up the settings in Better Docs. So the general settings, this is where we can set some slugs, where our documents will live uh, in terms of categories. And if you tag your documents, you can have a subset of posts for those as well. Now there is an analytics section, which I have not mentioned yet in this video, which is really cool. I'll take a look at that in a moment. And in this section, you can uh, decide whether you want to gather analytics from only people people who are uh, registered users or only people who are guests. So I guess that would depend on whether you're trying to sell stuff or you're trying to provide support. Uh, so really interesting, uh, thoughtful uh, layout there. I like that. Okay, this is the layout section where we can decide what elements actually display. So in the customizer, we set up the look and style of everything. And then in the layout section, we're gonna decide what elements even show up at all. So as an example, if in the single doc, I don't want to have that uh, sticky table of contents show up, I can just check that box. It goes away altogether. I don't have to worry about setting the color for it any longer. So you get the idea here. Um, the table of contents tags, remember I said the, the uh, heading three kind of became indented. Well, maybe I don't want the heading three to show up at all. I could untick those and then only H1 and H2 will show up inside of that sticky table of contents. So in the design tab here, this is just a link to open up the customizer, uh, what we just looked at. So not really a whole lot of reason to go into that now, but there are some other design options that I wanna cover quickly here. One, you could create your own page. You could change the layout to be however you want with two options. You could use short codes and they provide four different short codes here to get those widgets to show up where you want them on your page. Or additionally, if you download essential add-ons for Elementor, which not the paid version, this is actually included in the free version, you're gonna find if you go under elements, they actually have 
elements for uh, Better Docs. We have the category grid, the category box, and the search form that show up right here. So you'd be able to open up the page builder, you know, the free version of Elementor. You don't need to have Pro, and you'd be able to create your own Docs page just using their widgets and styling them there. I think that's a really nice touch. Now, the downside of this was I had to ask support to find these. I knew they existed because they talk about using uh, page builders, but I was like, how do I do that? I opened up Elementor, I didn't see anything. So it turns out you need to have essential add-ons installed and have these three elements uh, turned on. Uh, I, one of the things I like about essential elements is that you can only you can turn on the ones that you would just want to use. So you don't have to have so much bloat. I mean, there's dozens of add-ons that come with the pro version and uh, even probably 30 or so that come with uh, just the free version. So all you need is the free version and you get all of the styling options for Better Docs. In my opinion, it would have been nicer if they just included these in Better Docs, but I suppose they don't think that everyone's using Elementor, so you know they don't want to bloat up their plugin. Uh, it makes sense. But then I would love to see a banner over here saying, hey, go download the free version of Essential Add-ons. It's not anywhere, and it's not even in their help desk. So if I, if I go over here and I search for something like Elementor, it turns up no docs were found, even Page Builder. Uh, the only thing I get is the drag and drop uh, let's see, page builder, the drag and drop functionality to move stuff around inside of Better Docs. Remember where I showed you we can move this around? That's the only articles that show up. So uh, they have a little bit to do on the support side in terms of making this really easy to use. But once you get it, like you can see, there's not a whole lot of complexity from what I'm showing you thus far. It's just that initial setup that kind of threw me for a loop. And I wonder how many other people downloaded this and when this doesn't even work. I'm going to return this. Uh, so actually, I should mention at this time, there is a free version of Better Docs. You don't get uh, the little widget that's in the corner. You don't get the uh, page builder elements. You don't get the ability to move these items around. But if you just want to have a plain and simple knowledge base and you don't want to spend the 49 bucks, you can try out the free version first. So go check that out in the WordPress repository. All right, back over to our settings. This is the last thing to show you, the instant answer section. That is what they call the little widget that lives in the corner. Uh, and there's plenty of customization here. We've got uh, ways to change all of the text that shows up when people uh, engage the chat. You can turn this off altogether if you want, um, and right there, and it's gone. Then we can change the appearance, and you've got all sorts of customization options. You can upload your own images, uh, You know, really, really tweak it out to look exactly like you want. If you just wanna do colors, there's color settings here as well for, I mean, what is that? About 30 different spots where you can change colors. And then we have cross domain settings. This is what I was talking about. If you want to throw this up on your Thrivecart checkout page, just copy this snippet and you'll be able to, you know, it doesn't look like it's an iframe, so uh, that's even better. You just copy that little snippet and you'll be able to stick it in the before the closing body tag and that'll uh, throw that little chat bubble up inside of whatever website you're working on that allows you to inject like something like a Facebook tracking pixel or a Google Analytics pixel. Uh, if you can do that, you'll be able to put the little help doc uh, anywhere on the internet. So I think that's pretty cool. All right, so it's time for my final thoughts. Man, I was ready to throw this thing in the trash can about five minutes before recording this video, and then it all just clicked for me, and uh, I really, really like Better Docs. I like what they're going after, and I'll admit, I liked, I wanted to like it going in. Like The idea of being able to create uh, knowledge bases for clients is something, that's something people ask for. Currently, we do it with Toolset, and it's a bit tedious because you have to make a custom post type, and you know, there's certainly not the beautiful user interface that we're getting from help. Doc. So this is going to be a keeper for me for sure. I'm going to stack this one right now. I only have one code, but I'm going to go ahead and stack a couple more to get unlimited sites because I see this being a really good long-term solution for us. So all the support issues aside, I do have to let that weigh into the score a little bit because it should be easier to use. However, uh, it does solve a huge problem for my business. So uh, that balances things out a little bit. So, you know, your mileage may vary whether this is useful to you or not. Um, for most people, I think they're probably gonna only need, you know, the one code because uh, you're probably not building dozens of knowledge bases. But I'm gonna go ahead and give this one an 8.4 out of 10. I would 
bumped it up probably into the nines had it been a little bit easier to onboard. I really like it. All the customization features are there. This is a definite buy from me if you know you need this sort of thing. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. If you've enjoyed the content, make sure you click like. Leave me a comment down below. I try to answer everybody's questions. And hey, if you do wanna go grab your own copy of Better Docs, the link is in the description. That is our referral link for the channel. It kicks us back a few bucks when you click it. So if you want to support this channel and see me make more videos like this one, I do appreciate your click and I'll see you in the next review.